Today we're going to learn how to complete a dihybrid cross. A dihybrid cross is looking at two traits at the same time rather than just one. And so today we're going to use guinea pigs with different fur color and hair length to look at and uh, get an example of dihybrid crosses. The first one that we're going to do is crossing a heterozygous black short hair guinea pig with a white short hair guinea pig. And so we can see our parents, our parents' genotypes for the heterozygous black short hair is capital B, little b, capital L, little l. And for the white short hair, it's little b, little b, capital L, little l. Now the gametes for these individuals, because for these guinea pigs, because we're looking at two traits at the same time, we're going to have two letters, one letter for each allele in the gametes. So we have capital B, capital L, capital B, little l, uh, lowercase b, capital L, little b, little l. The white and for the short hair, same thing. We have little b, capital L, little b, capital L, little b, little l, and little b, little l. And so if we move down to our, our cross, the gametes have already been written in, just like in a normal 16, or in a normal 4x4 Punnett square, we've now expanded that to 16. And so we just fill in the boxes, or in this case, the guinea pigs, like what we've done for the original monohybrid crosses. So I'm going to fill these out. And if you notice, there's, I did a couple of things when I was filling these out. For each letter, I, I always wrote the same letter first. So I always wrote the B's first. B's came before the L's. And I also always wrote the capital first. So anytime I had a capital or a lowercase, I always wrote the capital before the lowercase within the letter combination. So for B's, I wrote the capital B before the little b. For L's, I wrote the capital L before the little l. Those are one of the two rules that we follow. Uh, when we're doing dihybrid crosses. Now to determine the genotype ratio or the genes for the offspring, uh, possible offspring, I can just count these up just like a monohybrid cross, but there's just a few more this time. And so if I were to count these up, I would see that I've got um, quite a few different possibilities. Looks like I've got two of these. And when I'm doing this to help me know exactly which ones I've counted, I like to cross them off. So I'm just going to put a little line through ones that I've already done. And I see that there's quite a different po uh, number of possibilities. Um, and I can be sure that I've gotten them all, one, because I've crossed them off, and two, all of my genotype, different genotypes should add up to 16, because I have 16 different possibilities here. So if I were to add these up, I would see that they're all 16. To determine the phenotypes, what I first like to do is write the different combinations. So I could have a black and short hair. I could have black and uh, long hair. 
I could have white and short, or I could have white and long. And so looking at this, uh, we know that, going back to the parents' genotypes, that black hair is dominant and short hair is dominant because of the capital L, short hair. And so I can add these up. So I'm going to have one, two that are black with short hair, plus another four that are black with short hair. So that's six. Black with long hair, I'm going to have one, two, and it looks like that's it. White with short hair, I'm going to have one, two, plus another four right here. I'm going to have six total. And white with long hair, I'm going to also have uh, two. And so that's how we do a dihybrid cross. Um, it's the same thing as a monohybrid cross. We're just looking at two traits at the same time. And so each of our gamete cells for the females and for the males are going to have two letters. Now there's one other step that we need to look at, and that is actually producing the gametes. Uh, when we determine our gametes, or when we figure out our gametes, we need to use and do a step, uh, something called FOIL. Uh, some of you may be familiar with it from math class. And essentially what we're doing is, um, I'm going to write FOIL right here. And FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. There we go, there's FOIL, first, outer, inner, and last. And so I'm going to use FOIL with these parents' genotypes to determine their gametes. So I'm going to start with the first letter and do the first letter of the B's and the first letter of the L's. And that's going to give me a little b, capital L. And if I do the outer, the outer two letters, the little b to capital L. And if I do the inner, little b to capital L. And the last, little b to capital L. Well, that one's pretty easy because they're the same. Let's do the other parent, black with long hair. First, I'm going to have a capital B and little l. The outer, I'm going to also have a capital B and little l. The inner, I'm going to have a little b and little l. And the same for the last. Now that I have my parents' gametes, I can fill those into my uh, chart here. I have a little b, capital L, little b, capital L, little b, capital L, and little b, capital L. And for my other parent, the male gametes, I have capital B, little l, capital B, little l, little b, little l, and little b, little l. And so just like I've done in the previous chart, I can fill in these uh, in, in fill these in individual sections here uh, to complete my Punnett square and then calculate the genotype and the phenotype ratios. Go ahead and do that now on your own.